Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So today we will take a look at keypads and uh, how to use them with a the microcontroller. So you can get a ton of different ones, but I just happen to have uh, two here. One that is like a screw-in type. You attach it from the back and a uh, sticky type, which is like a thin a vinyl type that you can stick on front of something. Both share the same common interface though. It's a uh, an 8 pin connector and you might think how can 8 pins read out 16 uh, switches? And it's quite simple actually. It's a matrix. So all of these switches are combined in rows and all of these in columns. So when you press the number nine, for example, you will combine the line from this column with the line from this row. And that's how you can detect it. It's only really good for pressing one button at a time. Um, although you can actually press two and read it out as long as they are in the same row or in the same uh, column. But if you try to press, say, 4 and 8 at the same time, you have no way of telling whether you pressed 5 and 7 or 4 and 8 because you're connecting these two rows and these two columns together. So you can press any combination. So your safest bet is really to only accept uh, single key presses if you deal with a matrix like this. If we think about how to drive it, it's not that uh, uncommon from normal uh, multiplexing of a matrix like this LED matrix. We will need to choose an input side and an output side. So we either we select our rows as inputs columns as outputs. When we multiplex an LED matrix, we apply voltage to one of the uh, columns here, and we can ground the row that we want to light up. If we have more, we can ground more rows. Then we switch it off and switch to the next one, and we uh, ground those LEDs that we want to light up in that column, and so on. And we do this really fast so that the human eye cannot um, notice when they are on or off. It just looks like a continuous uh, picture. We do exactly the same with the keypad, except we don't have to be quite as fast because we're not trying to make an image. We still apply a, a voltage to the column, but instead of, of grounding something, we just read uh, the row side here. So if we press 4, it will sweep through the columns and every time it hits 4, uh, this row here will be high and the others will be low, of course. If we are making it active high, you could make it active low, it's, it's your choice. So drawing it as a schematic, we have a grid like this. And our switches are here in between. So what the routine in the microcontroller will do is it will alternate putting a high voltage on here. And for every column, it will read the state of each of the rows. So if we press this button at column number two, the first row here will be on and the rest will be low. We have pull downs on here. So make sure that when we release the button, it goes to a low state. There's also another thing we have to keep in mind. We cannot simply leave these as outputs because if we set the first one high and the next one low and we press these two buttons at the same time, by mistake, 
it could happen. Then we will send uh, a current in through here. It will go through the switch, through the switch, and it can go to ground through this low here, if that's an output. That could short out the pin on the microcontroller. Even if the microcontroller was able to handle that, it will still make a false output. So we put the other pins into high impedance state, which is the state used for inputs. So even if you press the two, it will only apply a high voltage here. This is high impedance, so pressing both at the same time will just make this line go high and it doesn't damage anything. So let's take a look at one way to do that in an Arduino. So my Arduino program here is actually very simple. I have this function, keyboard readout, which will be called every time the code runs through uh, the loop. I have a character called button here, which I initialized to zero. And if, if nothing gets assigned to it, it will return zero, which means nothing was pressed. I have two variables here, one for the row and one for the column, R and C. And then I enter a double for loop. I have arranged the pins into uh, keypad row pins and keypad column pins. That way I can just iterate through uh, the array to get the next uh, row and the next column. All pins are initialized as input with pull up. So here I, I have them active low. So when I press a button, it gets low, else it's high. Then as we discussed, I simply just uh, run through, here it's the rows, and then I read on the column pins. I change the particular row pin to an output, and I put it low. I could have written low here, but I was lazy, I put a zero. It's the same thing. And then I, I run through all the column pins, and I see if any of them are low, then my button variable gets assigned that uh, expression here, which is just uh, 10 times the row and plus the column. That's just a way for me to assign it a unique number for each a key. This is just gibberish without a lookup table. So that's why I, I call it here a uh, child lookup table. And in that lookup table, it's down here, I have all the, the button values in ASCII. So my return button here, it returns an ASCII value. I might change that, I don't know. This is used in my alarm system uh, code, and I will use one of these keypads. When I store the pin number for that, I actually convert it back to an integer. Uh, in the beginning I thought about ASCII, but I think this is a good general example. And I forgot to mention, we put the row back to an input here, as we discussed previously. I also implemented a software debounce so that you don't get two button presses if there's a little bit of switch bounce in the contact, like faster than this, but you get what I mean. When the contacts connect, there can be a little bit bounce between them, so it can it can make contact more than once. And also when you release it, it can briefly make contact again. The way I handle this is uh, with some static variables. One is a temp variable that holds the previous uh, button press and a debounce timer. So if temp is zero, which means that nothing has been pressed previously, it will just uh, put temp as keep at readout and it will set a timer and return uh, temp. So this function is what in the end uh, returns the actual uh, value for the program. So when you have uh, pressed a button previously, we don't want the next loop round to register any key press. We want to wait for the uh, debounce timer to run out. We do want to check if you're still pressing the same key though meaning that you're actually just not finished pressing yet. It's when you release the button, we, we want to register that. So if you're still pressing the same key, we just 
continue this uh, timer we just reset it only when you stop pressing it this function will not be entered anymore and we will go to the last one that just waits until the debound timer has timed out so 100 milliseconds if you happen to press the same button again within 100 milliseconds again that switch bounce if you release and and just the context touch again when you release you don't want it to register a new key press so if you hold it for one second and release then you don't want two presses that's why we continue to check it after you have released it for 100 milliseconds though we set the temp back to zero in that case we we decide that now it's a new press and that's just how it works it's quite simple and probably could be improved <laughs> and i have uploaded the code so let's check if it actually works i made so that it prints out the the key presses on the serial monitor here and also if it registers any input from the pir sensor which i have so that might come up every now and then if we press one two three a see it it does register and I record the pin number here, which was wrong. And now we hit the correct combination. It actually turned out easier to store a pin number uh, back to front. Uh, so that's what I ended up doing. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and I will use this in my Arduino alarm system project. Thanks for watching the video and uh, see you in the next one. See ya.